from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of the roots of the grogger. We know that on Purim we use groggers. We make that all kinds of noises whenever the name of Haman is mentioned. The roots of this custom uh, go back in some ways to this Ramah, the Rabbi Moshe Isserlis was a rabbi in Krakow, and uh, the major authority in the Shulchan Aruch for Ashkenazim. And he says that He says, the original idea was that you'd write the name of Haman, or the picture of Haman, on a rock or a or a piece of wood, and then you would hit the rocks one against the other so that his name would be blotted out, as it says, blot out the name of Amalek, and also says in Mishle, the name of the wicked shall rot. He says, from that custom came the custom that they, they make noise when, uh, the, uh, when the name of Haman uh, is, uh, is mentioned. The Mishnah Bura mentions that uh, that the the, uh, the Chacham Tzvi, the great the great uh, Ashkenazic rabbi of the Sfardim in, in Amsterdam, he says he would uh, he would uh, bang with his foot on the floor when the name was mentioned. There are those who don't like this custom. Frimagodim says that it, it confuses everything. It makes it's hard to hear the Megillah. It's hard to hear the words. Rabbi Isaac Turner is a book that. Uh, I mean, hugging of different customs of the Jews of Ashkenaz. And there uh, he, says, uh, he says as follows. He has a different idea. He says that why do we make noise with Haman? Because they don't know how to do the real thing. What's the real thing? You see, the children make noise. It's a children's custom, not a, not a grown-up custom. And they do it because they don't know how to do the real practice. The real practice is Whenever Haman's name is mentioned, you would say, Shem Rishayim Yirkav. May the name of the wicked rot. The name of the wicked does rot. It will rot. This is a verse in Mishlei, Proverbs 10.7. And the, Medr- the, the, uh, the Medrash in Bereshis Rabbah actually says the following. It says, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Kol mishu mazgir zatzari venu mavarcho obarvaseh. If you mention the name of a righteous person, and you don't give him a blessing by saying, oh, Zecher Tzadik Livracha, that as the same verse in Mishlei says, the name of the, of the righteous should be a blessing. If you don't say that, you're violating the Torah because it says in Mishlei that his name should be blessed. And anybody who mentions the name of a wicked person and doesn't curse him, like people say, Hitler, Yemach Shemo, may his name be blotted out. That's appropriate because if you don't do that, then you violated the idea of Shem Yishayim Yerka, the same verse in Mishlei in Proverbs, that the name of the wicked should be uh, blotted out. So says the Rabbi Isaac Turner in the Sefer Min Hagim, in his, in his, his work about 400 years ago, a work about different customs of, of, of Ashkenaz of Germany. And he says, since the children don't know how to do the real deal, which is that every time that Haman's name is mentioned, we say Yemach Shemo, may his name be blotted out, or that the name of the wicked should be blotted out. Since they can't say those words, they're too young to remember that phrase, so they just make noise. So from there, uh, from there, he says, the custom came uh, to, uh, to, to, to rather um, make noise, to, to make some sort of noise when Haman's name uh, is mentioned. The Medrash Rabbah in Breshis, and I thank Rabbi Baruch Simon for wonderful sources in his new Sefer about Minhagim in Rebbe Baruch. He says, the, uh, the, um, there's a wonderful Medrash in Breshis Rabbah that says the following, that Rabbi Yonasan, that the famous Rabbi Yonasan, who was the Rabbi of Rabbi Shmuel ben Achmeni, great Rabbi of Midrash and Agadah, he says, when he came to this Pasuk in the Megillah, Asher Haglam Yushalayim, Asher Haglam Nebuchad Netzar Melech Pavel, it says that, that Mordechai was exiled with Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylonia. 
And we get to that Pasuk, he would say, Shechikat Samos. May his bones, may his bones be ground down, may his bones be, be rotted out. Why did he say something like that? Isn't that kind of insulting? Why, why, why did he say that? Because, after all, uh, after all, um, after all, um, it says that Shem Rishayim Yerkav, after all, the name of the wicked needs to be blotted out. Then it says right there, Rav, the famous rabbi, the first big rabbi in Babylonia, the founder of the Babylonian Talmud, he says, Ki Avimati Lahaman Bepurim Amar Aruim 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 Haman Varuim Banav. Whenever he came to the word Haman, he would say, Cursed is Haman and cursed are his children. In order to fulfill the verse, Eshem Yishayim Yerkav, that the name of the wicked should be blotted out. So in fact, this custom goes way back, two, almost 2,000 years ago, perhaps uh, in the year 200, let's say, when Rav lived, he would, uh, he would say this verse, 250, whatever it was, he would say this verse, he would Every time Haman's name was mentioned, he would say, Arur Haman, Arur in Kol Rishayim. He would say the words that we say at the end of the Megillah. You see, at the end of the Megillah, we think that at the end of the Megillah, we sing a nice song. No. At the end of the Megillah, we have an obligation. Since we heard the name of Haman so many times, we need to say, Arur Haman. And since we heard the name of Mordechai so many times, we need to say, Baruch Mordechai. And Brucha Esther. And, and Arur Zeresh. Cursed is Zeresh. And then we even say, because it says in the Medrash, it's, it's, he says, you know, by the way, what does that mean? When the name of Chavonah is mentioned, that assistant to Achashverosh, who we don't know whether he was an opportunist or a great uh, righteous Gentile, or whether he was really Elijah, or whether he was really an angel, but nonetheless, somebody called Chavonah Told, pointed out to Achashverosh that if you're wondering whether you should side with Esther or with Haman, I want to point out that the people that Haman is trying to destroy includes Mordechai. And Mordechai uh, was, was uh, on the hit list of Haman. Haman has a tree, very tall tree, to try to kill Mordechai. Even though Mordechai has spoken favorably about the king, he saved the king's life. And so when you mention Charvona, you should say Zachur Latov. So then we get into a question Rabbi Simon deals with. Wait a second. You mean in the middle of the Haggadah, of the middle of the Megillah, Rav, the great sage, would say other words? You're allowed to talk in the middle of the Megillah? You mean Rav Pinchas would, would say Zachur Latov in the middle of the Megillah? Uh, how could you possibly interrupt like this? So perhaps it was for, for this reason, because of this question, that, that we, we took up the custom of banging, clopping, and using groggers for Haman's name because we didn't want to interrupt during the Megillah. However, it should be noted that there was a different custom, perhaps the original custom of the grogger, which was to, yes, perhaps the, the Balkore would, the reader of the Megillah would pause, say Haman's name, pause, everyone would say, shame or shame your kav. Nebuchadnezzar was mentioned, we say, shachik atzamos, may his bones be ground down. And then when, uh, when Chavrona was mentioned, we'd say, perhaps when Esther was mentioned, when Zerus was mentioned, blessings and curses would be given as well. And then the Balkore, the reader of the, of the Megillah, would, would continue. Perhaps that was the original custom. Be out of concern for interruption, we followed the children's custom, which is you just bang, bang various things, whether it's your feet or a grog or whatever it is, bang on the table, bang on the stender, bang on the chair, just to blot out his name. But we, we, should, we should be clear. The idea of, the, of, this, of this custom is that we need to appreciate the difference between a tzaddik and a rasha. We need to appreciate what a tzaddik is and what he brings to the world. Tzaddik is so a tzaddik upholds the world. And we need to understand what those who bring evil to the world, yitamu chataim in ours, we wish the wickedness would, would cease from the land, we wish it would go away. We need to be committed in our fight against Amalek. That's why we read Parsha Zachor. We have Shabbat Zachor before, before Purim. Everyone tries to come to Shul to hear the reading about there is wicked and evil in the world and we need to blot it out. We pray that it be blotted out. The world will be a better place if we're blotted out.
And we don't want to forget the converse as well. That we need to appreciate when there are righteous people in the world and what great, greatness they bring to this world and how they make the world a better and brighter place. Zecher tzadik levracha, v'shem yishayim yirkav. The name of the righteous should be for a blessing. And let the name of the wicked uh, be blotted out. Thank you for joining us here in the Anshay Sefar Beth Lameth Congregation for our discussion of the Megillah and Purim. Join us each week for a discussion of the Parsha, the holidays, how-to videos as well. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asbi.org.